Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. Today we're going to be taking another look at a pro level Gap of Rohan game. The skill set is between 1100 and 1600, which obviously is the sweet spot for the skills needed to excel at this map. Gap of Rohan, of course, is completely divided down the center, which means that the game scales up to epicness that much faster because there's no pesky, useless T1 stage. It all just goes slam out balls to the wall on Eco. So let's go ahead and bump up the speed before we introduce the players, and that way we can try to burn off some of this boring early game that nobody ever wants to see anyway. On the left-hand side, we have Turkey Award 2016. Is that a prophecy? I know not, but he is definitely taking the Aeon faction. We've got Heaven taking Aeon as well. Luli Peru taking Gray Cybern and then Seraphim, the faction of choice for Robo Danny. On the right hand side, we've got Crotch Critter here after affectionately referred to as Crabs. Then we've got Dark Anubis taking Cybern, UEF for Ionic, and last but certainly not least, Aeon for Verosa. So, looks like these guys are going to head out towards the middle. Obviously, you're going to want to snag as much mass as you can possibly grab from this goodie bag in the middle. That's going to give you the mass that you need to tech up your mass extractors even faster than you normally would, seeing as you have, what, four, five, nine to your name. Scaling is pretty quick on this map, and that's why everyone loves it. Looks like we're going to have three ACUs from the left, two from the right, which might make things a little bit hairy for the right side team, but we'll just have to see how that plays out. Double Bomber coming out for the left-hand team. Turkia and Heaven getting one out. Looks like Heaven is... They're headed for their direct opponent's. Looks like yellow is kind of queued back in the base. Going to pass over all those engineers because who wants to kill expansioneers anyway? Bomb drop on Ionic. Looks like yellow is going directly for the hydro power plant. Apparently he wants to eliminate that source of power for his opponent. And three engineers killed first pass for Heaven. Exhibiting his epic level skill set. Pulling a hover bomb and trying to get another hover bomb out of it. And there we go, quadruple P-Gen kill. Not often you get to see skills on that level. Hydro Power Plant is down to about halfway, and that bomber is going to die to these two interceptors. Literally nothing killed on that side. Unfortunately, sometimes people just get the bad luck on their T1 bombers, and I think Yellow pulled the short straw on that one. Ionic. Queuing up some P-Gens around his forward mass extractor. Looks like he's going for that aggressive T2 mechs to defend the middle. And then back in his base, he is trying to get some T2 mechs online there as well. Someone calling for radar because, yes, everyone does unfortunately need radar because no one has x-ray vision. Even though you would think that a society as technologically advanced as these are, this far into the future would have some form of intel on their commander that would actually not let them go into a fight blind. But obviously they have not thought of that yet. I mean, you can see on none of the ACUs is there an antenna. Not one. They are all bald and unfortunately unequipped to deal with these situations. Ionic kind of scampering towards the back there. Looks like we do have some Thams moving across the center. Maybe not. Perhaps they're just holding the gap. Gotta stick with that static meta if you're gonna win on Gap of Rohan. You never want to provoke your opponent before the 10 minute mark because otherwise terrible, terrible things could happen to your base. Looks like Dark Anubis and Ionic are gonna set up a shield in the middle, go for some T2 power generators and some point defense to lock down that midpoint. I would not be surprised if some Viper spam came out of the left hand side, but we'll just have to see what the future holds for us. Looks like the right side does have a somewhat superior air presence. Got a nice little handful of interceptors on the north and the south. So that is going to provide a fair bit of protection anyway. Looks like we got a T2 air factory going down for heaven. Does he have mercies planned? Does he have a drop plan? We will just have to find out in just a moment. Cerberus turrets. Oh, and TMD. Never forget the ever critical TMD because on Gap of Rohan, TAC missiles always, always happen. Oh no! Verosa is getting raided 
at the 8 minute and 35 second mark, we finally have a little bit of action in this game. T1 Bomber is going to take care of it though, squash the Rebellion before it even starts. Not a single Mass Extractor loss, even though that one is only at 40 health. Would have been hilarious if there was a collateral damage kill from that bomber, but unfortunately it was not meant to be. Point defense going down for Verosa. That should lock up that corner pretty dang tight versus any Auroras that may come because point defense always trumps Auroras. Always. Of course, Turkey of War would not be building artillery because who needs artillery anyway? Looks like we got a Swift Wind out and a T2 Transport. What madness is this? Heaven is on an upgrade. We'll have to see what is going on here. Looks like he is scooting some engineers to the front lines. Right next to his ACU, probably going to assist that upgrade and get where he is going a little bit quicker. Have to check in and see what that destination is in a moment. More Auroras attempting to cross the pass, but you shall not pass. Point defense utterly obliterating the Auroras as they come through. No treats for you. And the air is definitely in favor of the right-hand side. Now, large swarm of interceptors guarding the northern edge. There are two swift winds. Count them to a terrifying air force for heaven. But uh, he will have to stay on his side of the map, at least for the next little bit. A couple of Nothas out for crabs. I am completely glad that he is getting T2 fire bombers online because he may be able to pull a snipe with those. Every gap of Rohan needs a good snipe. And unfortunately, we haven't been able to see one yet. I don't even see TAC missiles coming online. What is this madness? But there is a T3P gen at 12 minutes. That probably means that there's a T4 push coming online in just a moment. Heaven getting down yet another T2 power generator. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what his upgrade status is. Looks like he has, oh no, the dreaded chrono dampener and T3 engineering suite with the Omni suite. Is he going to drop his commander? I think so. However, I do believe that is suicide, considering the amount of interceptors that are in the area. Dark Anubis, look at that lovely mass donation. That would be referring to the Monkey Lord, which is rapidly coming up in the middle. I don't know that he's correct, though, because this fire base is positioned a little bit too far south to cover the entire gap, so that Monkey Lord could actually get all the way up to Verosa's base and then trample the backside and never interact with this glorious fire base going down for Ionic and Dark Anubis. They are throwing down T3 point defense like madmen, which could easily kill the Monkey Lord should it go in that direction. Lots of swift winds out. For heaven, he has boosted his air production, and he is now scooting towards Ionic's base. This is about to get dicey. That transport surviving for the drop on 500 health, landing, heaven immediately going to town on all of the mass extractors here. He's going to start a T2 point defense, change his mind, and go for T1. This is very, very bad for Ionic. You can see Dark Anubis's first reaction is to start spamming the ever-living hell out of T1 land factories while immediately starting Viper spam with his T2 that he just threw down. That is actually the perfect response. Absolutely perfect, but Heaven is going to continue throwing down T2 shields and various and sundry other items for his forward firebase, and I do mean forward in the most drastic sense. He's going to build a SAM to try to keep the air off of him because Verosa has succeeded in getting T3 air online. That means Strap Bombers and or Mercies may be an option. He is going to bring his Swift Winds in. Hopefully that will, well, nope, yet another half-built thing. Apparently he has decided that starting multiple things so that he has... He just bypassed a 80% tack defense <laughs> to build another one. I don't understand anymore. I don't know how the world works, but apparently this is the new utopia where it is better to have five halfway completed buildings than three completed ones. More shields going down. The shield of light, of course, will shine bright in the darkness that comes with the Viper spam. Hopefully it will be able to succeed in holding those things off. Good thing that Aeon uh, TMD is good for killing off Viper missiles 
but still the firing sequence is so slow on them that a lot of those missiles are going to come through. He is spamming up T1 mobile artillery to wreck the base of Ionic. Ionic is just going to have to die a horribly painful death because he has a single flapjack left and he has even stopped production in that factory. Looks like he is trying to get T3 point defense online still and there goes the Monkey Lord, as predicted, walking directly past all of the stationary point defense because we all know that point defense fails when it comes to mobile units. The amount of Medusas on this map is too damn high. Fortunately, Chrono Dampener is doing a good job of slowing those suckers down. That stun radius is tremendously huge. It's going to shut down any of those units that are trying to encroach upon the base. Heaven saying build strap bombers now. I gotta say that is an excellent recommendation seeing as the only player who has a significant air tech level is about to lose everything that he's got. That HQ is not long for this world and neither is the power. That Monkey Lord doing a beautiful job of trampling the northern base. Looks like Verosa is gonna hightail it towards the south. He is going to be able to intercept these fervors that are moving northward. Heaven is unfortunately getting pushed back quite a bit. The Medusa spam is real, folks. We have got a grand total of 21 T1 land factories pushing Medusas. This is the most glorious example of spam that I have seen in recent days. Dark Anubis has got a pretty substantial economy and he's reclaiming his T1P gens to feed it further, ramming all of that mass into the T1 spam. Monkey Lord and T1 Point Defense have made contact with Varosa. Varosa is doomed. Doomed, I say. And of course, since it's no share, all of that economy in the north side is going to go offline. And that's going to give heaven a little paradise to retreat to where there are no more enemy units to be seen. Meanwhile, that Monkey Lord is to, going to continue its rampage through the T1, just vetting up at will, already at four vet, about to clear five. Ionic is very far away from his point defense. That Monkey Lord is going to come in reach of it, but I don't know. There are enough T3 point defense to kill that Monkey Lord if it continues walking in that direction. I don't know that it will get the commander before it dies. Looks like Kevin is going to retreat all the way up into Verosa's spawn, possibly start building his own base up again. Hey, why not? If one base is good, why not two? And he's got a load of T2 gunships there as well. Turkey War is pushing restores for all he is worth while driving them directly into Sam's for maximum effectiveness of the crash damage. Ionic fleeing in terror before the might of the Monkey Lord. And that Monkey Lord is uh, making the most critical mistake that you should never make ever. It is, or it was, directly focus fired on the ACU, which meant stop and fire, stop and fire. And the Monkey Lord is continuing to struggle to get that beam tracking correctly. And yeah, bad firing sequence leads to a terrible death without killing the ASU, Ionic, breathing a tremendous sigh of relief as he retreats into the base, I am sure, is going to take his protection in the center of all of those land factories. Excellent meat shield, unfortunately not a very good shield over your head. Lots of T2 gunships moving to the right. That is going to impact on Crab's base. But he does have T3 air on lines. Three interceptors should be more than sufficient to take out those gunships before any serious damage is done. The Medusas are once again closing in on heaven. Kind of ironic that one of the evil gods would be uh, closing in on paradise. 120 Medusas on the map, even accounting for the Chrono Dampener. That is a terrifying amount of damage to have crashing down upon your head. He is still pushing out the chrono dampener shots, but it is not stunning as much as you would like to see it stun if you're trying to save your base. Of course, pro level tactics always condense your point defense for maximum veterancy potential of the enemy units. You always want to have multiple PD going down at once. 
said no one ever. Bricks are now tearing into the base as well, which it looks like those can actually engage from outside Chrono Dampener range, which is a very interesting thing that I had not keyed into before. Heaven is going to walk his ACU directly in. That is going to let him stun those bricks, overcharging one. Maybe he can get the other, and I totally missed a Strat Bomber kill on Crotch Critter. Thankfully, there is no debate about what actually happened to that commander, so I don't think we need a fast action replay. Not much to be done versus the might of six Seraphim Strat Bombers. Not exactly that easy to dodge those things. Heaven is trying to kill off all of these Medusas, overcharging five, six at a time. Restore is trying to get in, but that is so much damage crashing down around his ACU. He is going to keep fighting though. Dodge, dodge and weave. That is the only thing that you can do. And there is Medusa Fire impacting the Restore, I think. Chrono Dampener unfortunately does stun friendly units as well. Pro tip, if you're going to ram all of your units in around a Chrono Dampener ACU, then you definitely need to gift them to the person with Chrono Dampener so that they do not all get stunned. But yeah, that was, uh, that was Medusa Fire taking out a Restore right there. Artillery shells impacting air units. This is why we all love Supreme Commander. T2 Gunship's going to try to come in for the rescue. Heaven is still dodging and weaving. 77, 80 kills on that commander. About to tip his fifth veterancy. And still chrono dampening the hell out of all of that spam. So many T2 Gunships. There is a Sam in range, unfortunately, which is trying to knock some of them down. That tiny, tiny little bit of AoE is actually having an effect on those. If those gunships move forward, they will have a better chance away from the Sam, but then they will still have to deal with the stray shots from those Medusas. Was that Sam built just a minute ago? No, it was not. That is the original Sam from a while ago. T2 gunships gradually getting knocked out. Renegades coming in, or not Renegades, Spectres coming in from Turkey of War as well. They're trying to knock down those bricks while Heaven retreats. The base looks like it is falling. Heaven is about to lose his second point of operation behind enemy lines. Thanks to the overwhelming power of Medusa spam. Dark Anubis still pouring a trem... Excuse me. Bad time to get the hiccups. Pouring a tremendous amount of mass into this spam. Got 188 Medusas on the map as of right now. And he is still spamming away. Strat Bombers look like they're about to make another pass. Are the ACUs all under shields? They are, but unfortunately they are flimsy Cybern shields. Two bombs to take them out. And here come the rest. Dark Anubis not even making an effort to dodge. Well, looks like it was too little too late. He did not realize those were queued on as Commander tried for T2 shields and it was not enough. Dark Anubis knocked out by the plague that is T3 Strap Bombers. Ionic now under fire as well. All of that Medusa spam going up in smoke. That means Heaven is safe, at least for now. Ionic trying to get some T2 shields up. And one more Strap Bomber and he is out of here. Thankfully, there are five coming in. UEF T2 shield coming online. No! Literally the last bomb passed it. There was a Monkey Lord there as well that would have killed him. And Jester Spam at 23 minutes in the T3 stage of the game. Jester Spam coming in to try to snag that kill, but it is not going to be fast enough. Well, guys, hopefully you learned a lot from that game. As always, Gap of Rohan offers a wealth of strategic options with exceptionally good gameplay. Hopefully you guys all enjoyed that as much as I did. Thank you to Heaven for sending this piece of ridiculousness in to me. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.